So what's the happen. source of your lack of sleep, your insomnia? Is it you're not working out enough? Is it? I'm sure that's part of it. Yeah. I'm sure that's part <laughs> of it. Um, but other sources, well, Nietzsche. Yeah, uh, <laughs> of course. It's a terrifying, it's a terrifying thing. It's a terrifying world he pictures, um, for yeah. sure. Yeah. But, and then the other thing is the, the stuff going on in town, it's like, I don't, I've never done real estate development. Like, I don't really know <laughs> anything. Yeah. So it's just all hitting you at the same time. Yeah. And yeah. then I wake up and I'll have, you know, five different competing thoughts. And eventually one of them will wrestle the other ones out of the way. And mm -hmm. then a true Jacob be... versus the angel situation, right? If only they were angels. <laughs> yeah. They are most assuredly demons. Yes. That you yeah. wrestle. Yes, exactly. So, so what, what kind of like, you know, what, what kind of, problems are you are you juggling in those scenarios right what are, what are the what are the real estate development demons that yes. you would wake well, up as from? community members and we as are much interested we are interested in you know yeah. as much as you're willing to share of course you know you have you have I, your prerogatives but i'm an open as i started this whole process i found out yeah. like the more that i'm an open book with things mm -hmm. the better it goes people like to know what's going on yeah they, at least in this town they don't try and screw you too much yeah um <laughs> so it, it's a it's a pretty safe thing so yeah. the first thing the one that i recently kind of resolved actually was okay make an investment Hmm. can you get a return on it yeah right and mm -hmm. what are the metrics by which how do you begin to understand what a return would require what it looks like and i realized i purchased like 10 buildings and i, like, I didn't do any due deal i didn't do anything <laughs> I, I'm, just, I, uh, I'm just in way over my head here yeah and so i sat down the next day and i had yeah, I threw away my to-do list and I was like, I need to open up an Excel sheet. Yeah, and really just and sort of crank it out. Teach yeah. myself a formula or two. Yeah. So and in that relation, so are, are you saying like, you you your eyes are bigger than your stomach, right? Where you don't necessarily have explicit plans for the property, but you're sort of hoping that that develops or that you get what you need from it. Well, I it, it was a sensation of maybe my eyes are bigger than my stomach, but yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I've never seen my stomach. Mm. <laughs> and, if I saw my go. stomach, I wouldn't even know what I was looking at. <laughs> yeah, um, just a lump of flesh. You know? yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it was, and then it was settled by over the course of you know eight hours or so. Okay, here's let's just get everything out. Yeah, and get some nice colored spreadsheet data out there, which I'm normally not a spreadsheet guy. I find that Excel, you know, yeah. as most people find it to be dehumanizing, soul deadening. Yeah, dehumanizing, yeah. <laughs> an eldritch language only the damned know. <laughs> have you guys ever seen an Excel wizard go to town? Yeah, no, Dude. we we talked about this on the show a while ago, but I've watched competitive Excel spreadsheets. That's a thing. It yeah. is, yeah. yeah. So people who are most of them are accountants and stuff. Oh, but yeah. They, oh, yeah. they compete. For I'd be surprised cash if one of them was like a like a, an exotic dancer. Like, yeah. tell me that, <laughs> then I'd be impressed. But <laughs> yeah, they compete for like these big cash prizes. It's considered an esport. So they have really? commentators, you know, they're like these really colorful guys. There's this dude who's a Excel influencer. That's a thing. Uh, who's oh, this, uh, this, this black guy who's bald and he wears colorful suits and his whole thing is like, let's make Excel fun. Right. <laughs> and so he Beautiful. does all the commentary and he's like, man, I really just like the way this guy's go doing about this. You know, this shows that this guy's really got, you know, Excel under his, under his thumb. Is it this like, is really cool. Is he like making commentary on the articulation of the fingers? <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. A piano instructor? <laughs> I think, I think it's more, it's less about speed and more about figuring out the various functions of okay. the software. I don't, I mean, I, don't, I think like people would argue that coding can be an art, right? Like, you know, how you go about solving a particular problem, I think is the interesting aspect. Maybe not just like the binary Coding can be, coding yeah. can be efficient. It can't be an art. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. You ever played The Last of Us? <laughs> <laughs> Although I will say, I have heard, um, there's a coding language called Perl. Okay. And apparently this is another one of those weird competitions that are out there, but there's, mm -hmm. there's Perl poetry. Because wow. Perl is, I think, the only coding language where you can sort of write out sentences and ideas. And so the, the competition is who can write the best poem in Perl that also executes a function. Mm. That's awesome. That's um, pretty nice. So that would be, <laughs> I would allow that. Yes. You know. <laughs> I'll allow it. <laughs> it still has a little too much utility for my taste. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. It's very, it's very, very bonus. But at the same time, though, you know, even though it's in the digital sphere and you are sitting there and you're typing away and you're staring at a screen. You know, is not the Masons work a form of art? <laughs> is not the infrastructure, the internet infrastructure that runs our nation's trains a similar work of art? I don't know. Yeah. Does it, but, I mean, does it, does it sort of like bring the Mason, obviously, right? Yeah. Because that can sort of take me out of myself. 
and make me think, oh, I'm okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that, at the end of the day, is what a good artist. Yeah. Well, what is it that makes you feel that way? Like a good arch? You're looking at the arch, you're like, damn, I, I'm not amounting to Depending on the arch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's true. I mean, As some arches. As we understand. Yes. You know, <laughs> the value of a good arch. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Especially in my shoes, because I've been, I've been there. It's been a problem. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I want to go back real fast to our previous conversation in regards to, um, you know, the revenue projections and everything like that. You know, mm -hmm. the. So, you know, obviously with that in mind, a r return on investment wasn't necessarily the first thing on your mind when you made the investment, right? Is that too crazy to say? No, or I mean, think that's... Are the, there other motivations that sort of motivated you to, to make the decision? It was always in mind that, okay, there needs to be a return. Yeah. yeah. But a lot of people go into, like, depending on where you, if you're some big real estate developer, you're going into hot markets your thought is, I'm going to get back 15% at least. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Which is nuts. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's, I mean, at least... In, in it is, way. you know, it's magic. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is this is why uh, Dr. Jackson thinks that landlords are, you know, dirty maggots who just, like, suck the blood of yes. the, the proletariat. Yes. Which is a very... And he's right. An increasingly yes, yes. popular position. Yes. <laughs> yeah, there's, but there's something to it. And yeah, yeah. To, to, to be fair to the, the dirty maggots... Um, <laughs> The way the way the thing that was bothering me is, is as I'm entering into this, yeah, the sort of thing that is on my mind constantly is okay. There's wisdom to be received out there, mm -hmm. but very clearly you look out at the world and it's like something has gone deeply wrong here. Yeah, um, and whether it's real estate or politics or you know, whatever, everything. You're like, okay, maybe I need to be very careful about what wisdom do I choose to receive. But then mm -hmm. it, it leaves me as the arbiter of what is wise and that sucks yeah. to be yeah. in that position um it's terrible <laughs> yeah so it's it's a uh, because at the end of the day the, the 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 yeah the the people who do commercial real estate they have investors and bankers and stuff to look out for which i understand buildings need to get built and they need to get built somehow and somebody needs to fund it yeah mm -hmm. but um the way that the developers justify it is by charging these crazy high returns so they can get in enough parties mm -hmm. to to make it make it work and you end up with a bunch of soulless crap yeah the end of it. <laughs> um, I, I like to call it the best of magnolia magazine that's what i always say <laughs> when you look only at, it was the best yeah that's exactly true, it's yeah. like whenever you're flipping a house or something and somebody just takes a mid-century victorian is like instead of the hardwood or this carpet we're just going to put down gray vinyl yeah you know, it's like, like how much of a bulk discount can i get on any gray paint? <laughs> yeah <laughs> how many how many barn doors can i buy sliding bon, <laughs> barn <laughs> doors <laughs> yes to put into i kind of love the sliding barn door though it's a it's, it's, if it's tastefully done yeah, <laughs> yeah you can say that it's about rare. anything it's yeah. rare but if it uh, is tastefully done so then i know this might be kind of a big picture question but what are some of the visions that you have for your property as you know, as a utility to say the community specifically, mm. right? Like, what do you imagine you're bringing as a positive resource or a force of positive change by kind of working in this sphere? Because well, you know, the hope would be that you would you would you would believe that about your work, right? Yeah. If you're worried yeah. that you're being a leech. <laughs> so, at, there's a few different ways to look at it. The one thing yeah. is, okay, Hillsdale. I don't think people believe this yet, but I th I think that this is true. It's going to be. And actually, interesting investment target for yeah. for people within the next five ish years. Mm -hmm. I mean, the colleges is popping off with popularity, and yeah. there's other things going on that it's actually bringing more and more attention to the town mm -hmm. um, as a sort of tourist destination of sorts. Um, and so, I'm hoping that if I get in now, before all that takes off, I, I like rental rates in Hillsdale are incredibly cheap. I'm yes. sure as yes. as renters of this facility, you understand <laughs> this. Yes. Um, <laughs> I would like to see those rise eventually, not today. Yeah. Um, so that that's one thing. Because because if the rental if the rental rates rise over time, that's an indication that the community is prospering, mm -hmm. and because they can uh, afford these things, and enough people are engaging in commerce to allow for it. Yeah. Um, but first, like I don't want to if I can if I can structure my investments and in renovations in such a way that I'm expecting, you know, a return, but a low enough return that I don't need to be charging you know like the average per square foot price is five to seven bucks in town here mm -hmm. yeah you know maybe i can start at seven bucks a square foot or something like that and then five years from now it's 10 12 something yeah. like that and and so take it more gradually that way and because i'm actually 
moving back here and planning to be a part of the community, I'm hoping to have the mindset of, okay, I, I can actually sort of work to restore what should be here. Yeah. As opposed to, you know, down, you know, throw down a Lululemon for the, the <laughs> new Yaleys that are showing up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The funny thing is, though, is that, I mean, the college students here really don't spend much money Mm-mm. in town, right? It's, no. it's, I feel like a, a big trap that a lot of people fall into. And we actually on the show have talked often about mm-hmm. the business <laughs> situation. situation. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one of the big problems is that I think people, it's, I think, why. I'm not going to say the specific bookstore, but why a bookstore has failed four times in a row now is because people are under the impression that this is a college town that would support a business like that, something yeah. for college students. Where it's yeah. like, well, nowadays college students really don't like spending money that's not online. Yeah. <laughs> and weirdly enough, if you go into any other college in America, I had a conversation with um, John Miller about this yesterday. If you went to any other college in America, walking four blocks would be... You know, that's halfway to your first class in the morning, mm-hmm. right? Especially if you go to a state college or mm-hmm. even one of the bigger liberal arts colleges. Mm-hmm. In Hillsdale, oh my gosh. You ask a Hillsdale student to walk a block, they act like their feet have fallen off. <laughs> they're, they're crying at you. Very right? sedentary school. Yes. yes. A very sedentary school because everything is so clumped together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I remember feeling like downtown was impenetrable. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah, not only do people not walk th- that far because the yeah. school is so clustered. On top of it, you've got two very busy streets. Yes, that yes. That are just, you know, they are very daunting to cross uh-huh. um, if you don't have to. But yeah. I, I think I think that this is part of the problem. People look at the college and say, "Oh, we'll get all these students." And it's like, no, no, no. You don't even want the students. You want their parents. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, whoever paid for their scholarship. Yes. Um, Who's going to be like in town? That. Yeah, because yeah, there's, um, within you know, a pretty short amount of time going to be around 85,000 people annually showing up here. Yeah. Mainly for college events, but then also for the, the train stuff that's going on. Yeah, true. Um, and then the shooting range, I know is technically the college still, but that's becoming its own independent yeah. um, feature. And let us not forget the Meyer. <laughs> the Meyer. <Yeah. laughs> exactly. Let us not forget. Rectifying the, the wrongs of, of Walmart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, goodness. Yeah, no, that's that's... Yeah, that's it's an, it's an interesting setup. Talking about what you were talking about with rental prices, I think it's a blessing and a curse in a lot of ways because low rental prices allow stuff like what we're doing here to happen. Right? We can, mm-hmm. you know, build a studio. We can t- kind of try to start a boutique esque business in a place. Right? Office for people who are remote working, but also there's businesses that, you know, I we didn't secure a rate like this, but I mean, people have storefronts for. Five hundred dollars or less mm-hmm. for a storefront, right? And so the business doesn't actually have to have a successful bone in its body. Yeah. It doesn't need to be your main source of income. It's not something you have to pour a bunch of resources into. It can be something you show up to for two hours, three days a week. Right? I, I rent to a number of these. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And you know, and that's fun, and that's fine, and it and it populates a downtown. But at the same time, I think it sort of kind of creates a, a large S, mm-hmm. you know, of oh yeah, we just this is just a hobby. This is just the thing that we you know yeah half because yeah. it's only 500 bucks a month which to you know anybody who's making good money and has been for you know 30 years that's pittance yeah that's i mean it's it's nothing yeah bucks a month, <laughs> which is weird I, mean, I remember you know you grow up and you're like oh i can go buy 25 tootsie rolls down the <laughs> store with my, my quarter here yeah and it's that 20 dollars is the new one dollar <laughs> yeah know? what when did it for you guys switch that you realized like oh a thousand bucks is no it's not much money yeah yeah i uh for some people, that never happens. But yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> let's true. be clear. That's true. There, there's always a mindset of like, yes, be prudent with a thousand bucks. But yeah. There, yeah. I, I feel like most people at a certain point realize like, okay, yes, it might be painful to make the expenditure. Yes. Yeah. But uh, it's not the, the end, end the day, all be all. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, I distinctly remember walking through a Costco um, and seeing some sort of like playhouse. I think it was like a some sort of uh, f- like drivable fake car or something in, in a Costco. <laughs> and it was like uh, $199. And I was like, that is literally the most expensive thing I have ever seen in my life. <laughs> there is not a denomination of money that's more expensive than that thing. Yeah, right? yeah. It seems so impenetrable. Right. But now I'm like, damn it, I had to bring my car in. And that was, yeah. oh, thank goodness it was under $300. <laughs> right. You know, and so it, I think. Part of it's inflation, but a lot of it is just, you know, shift in priorities and shift in the you know, amount of resources that you have access yeah, to. Yeah, I mean, when you have things like, you know, 
when you have to buy groceries for more than one person, yeah, <laughs> totally changes your perception, right? Initially, when your wife first comes home, it's like, yeah, I spent two hundred fifty dollars at the grocery store. You're like, kill me. <laughs> but <laughs> as time goes on, you're like, oh, this is just how we have to eat. This is yeah. just normal. Uh, it's very gradual. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I don't know. When... I remember when I was like fourteen, I got my first job at working at a men's warehouse. Yeah, mm. and I thought I was, you know, doing impressive impressively well by like maintaining a balance of two three hundred bucks in the bank account. Yeah, yeah once i go past that this is not good <laughs> advice for anybody um getting into any job but i was like oh if i've got 300 bucks in there i like i don't need to save any more than that <laughs> yes exactly um, that's yeah. the rainy day fund right there 300 dollars. Yeah. exactly yeah. yeah what was it like working in a men's warehouse uh it was it was a lot of fun so we yeah. i worked in the the fargo north dakota men's warehouse um store 4145 wow um you still remember? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like we, a steel I a, trap. I had a great coworker <laughs> group there, um, and it was a party. Um, my mm. men's warehouse in particular had a lot of washed up or recovering addicts. Mm. Nice, yeah, yeah. And nice. so they would, uh, you know, get their jollies by you know just screwing around in the store. Yeah, um, platonically, of course. <laughs> um, <laughs> But I remember probably non platonically as well. Some of, some of them, <laughs> yeah, some of them uh, non platonically. But uh, I, I was fourteen. I was yeah, yes, such yes, who knows? But I remember I was there for a couple of years, and one year, like men's warehouse, every two years. So I would have been, I think, sixteen when this happened. Um, the sort of regions of the men's warehouses will get, have these big holiday parties, mm-hmm. and so. Yeah. Our our tri-state region gathered in Minneapolis at a convention center, you know, some nice Hilton or something. I don't know for you know the the Oscars of men's warehouse. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and um, did you win? Anything? We did. We got store. Whoa. We got tri-state store of the year. Whoa, it's a lot of and, pride. <laughs> but it was it was um well pride, but then quickly overtaken by shame because. <laughs> So <laughs> Minneapolis is three to four hours from Fargo, depending on where um, where you're going in town. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so we rent, uh, we we get a coach bus, and we we take it down to Minneapolis. And because my um, my store is just full of you know, real uh, <laughs> stand up dudes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, fantastic people, but boy, they like to party. Yeah. yeah, it was a booze cruise the whole way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they had no qualms about giving alcohol to a minor. Uh, yeah. <laughs> not, they sat me down next to a cooler full of gin yeah. and a uh, meat and cheese platter. And <laughs> that sounds like a great Saturday night to me. <laughs> oh, man. It was, let me tell you, it was. It was. Yeah, yeah. And then we had to stop in St. Paul to pick up another store. And and their employees, <laughs> and they all got out. We're like, what the hell's going <laughs> no, on? No, yeah, we get in there. We, we go yeah. to pick them up. We are all just gone. Plastered, yeah. Plastered. And they are stone cold sober. Um, yeah. Like as soon as I walked into the store to prep to get on the bus, my my manager handed me uh cranberry vodka. Yeah. Mm. And <laughs> none of them had so much as looked at a drop of alcohol in St. Paul. Yeah. And then not only are we drunk and getting them from the store, we walk out of the store and three of my coworkers are smoking weed. Yeah. <laughs> and they are just horrified. And we show up to the event and there's I don't know how many hundreds of people there, you know. Yeah. Nicely dressed stores. individuals. Yeah, we're all wearing our tuxes yeah, and whatnot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, you rented them from your own house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. House. yeah. Very cheap if you own the store. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and we are the only store in the entire tri state region that drank. Yeah, pre-gamed at yeah. all. There were people that you know drank and got drunk yeah. while there, but yeah, boy, uh, the party yeah, when, rolled in with that <laughs> when with they that story. announced that we had won. <laughs> story, yeah, there was a commotion and a ruckus, and it was all from us. Yes. Yeah, and a lot of uncomfortable murmurs from the other. I imagine that the other stores were like, "Well, at least you know these guys. They don't know what the hell they're doing." Oh, and then yeah. you guys win the tri-state area store. Yeah, uh, that's what a real underdog doing? story. That yeah. sounds like a '90s comedy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but there are others. Like, I remember one day, um, our manager was named. His name was Brent, and he had a at the, at the, the statue st- of limitations had passed. <laughs> <laughs> Just to let you know. Yeah. Um, his uh, he at the at the Starbucks next door. He had an order called the Brent, mm. and you go in and you could order a Brent, and it was a um like a venti latte something with six shots Ooh. and uh it was insane it was all sugar and all caffeine yeah and um one day we went and ordered like three brents and we gave, got back and 
Brent had to leave for something, and the other person had to leave for something. So I'm stuck there, and they're like, oh, we'll see what happens if we give this. <laughs> Me versus three breads. <laughs> yeah, I ended up shaking and twitching in the corner yeah. for the remainder of my shift. <laughs> and I got paid for it. It was That's, there you go. So wait, like you literally couldn't move? Like you were on the ground in the corner, or I, I, I was just in a weird, yeah, you know, weird way. Weird I don't know if you. Yeah. Ever I feel like if you tried to shots of espresso. <laughs> yeah, I can't say I have. I feel like if you tried to fit somebody in that state, it would be kind of awkward. <laughs> oh no, they they definitely pushed me off to the side. <laughs> yeah, customers came in. But yeah. see, but at that warehouse, they were used to taking somebody and taking them off the floor and putting them into a back room because they were a little off or uh, <laughs> off today. You know, had something going yeah. on. Yeah. But uh, don't worry, I'm into I'm into depressants now rather than stimulants. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Well, so I was actually uh, gonna say I think uh, it was a Brent. Brent, he uh, he most likely needed to drink a lot when he got home in order to calm down from all of that. I uh, imagine he did. That, yeah. That, uh, I was about to say Tabasco. So, what? so what kind of <laughs> you know? I don't want you to dox Brent because I'm sure he's a stand up guy, but. Well, I don't know if he's alive anymore. Yeah, that's the funny thing about guys like that. Yeah. They just you know, it's like when you, people talk about people they knew in high school who were you know weird mm-hmm. or you know uh, partiers or kind of obviously on drugs all the time it, like there's a solid chance they don't don't make the 25 it's just a yeah. solid chance you know yeah. and i think that some people have more experience with that than others yeah uh, but i think facebook has proven <laughs> that that's a pretty common yeah occurrence but i'm curious what what was this guy's hair situation like because i mm. imagine you guys all were wearing well-fitted suits because I, when I the think, one thing you cannot fake, mm-hmm. you can try. You, what yeah. you cannot fake is the hair. I always say that, or I, I would say that if I'm imagining a manager of a men's warehouse, his hair looks like you could crack a nut on it. He, like, I don't know what so product much he's, pomade it had, or it, it wasn't stiff. It was okay. well coiffed, mm-hmm. um, and it had. He was he was a little older, so it was he had a, a good head of hair. Yeah, and you know, gray with like silver streaks, kind of. And then he was. I'm sure he tanned in a bed because mm-hmm. um, he, he had very tan skin. Yeah. And he was the first guy I ever met who put on nail polish. Oh, wow. He, he okay. put on clear nail clear, polish yeah, just yeah. To, to look spruce it up. Yeah. <laughs> um, sparkly? Fresh things. <laughs> yeah. It, it had this nice smell to it. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're just sitting there smelling his hands? Is that Basically, yeah. 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 This was just one of my many duties. Just you shaking in the corner smelling like red One hands. of my many duties. Yeah. <laughs> Hand smeller. Yeah. Statue of limitations have passed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, guys, we got we got to introduce the guests to this podcast. Freaking eight guys, uh, we've got freaking Luke Robson. Luke Robson, podcast. yes, yes, Debonair, uh, yes, uh, Simpson royalty, uh, and also entrepreneur. Right? Is that technically <laughs> what it is, or is it no, I, uh, no, right? I don't like the word entrepreneur anymore because yeah. people like if you hear somebody say, "Oh, I'm an entrepreneur," it means yeah. like they're artfully unemployed. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which, which I, I suppose is like case, technically but... true. Like I, I don't technically have. A job, mm-hmm. um, yeah, in the traditional sense. But there's got to be yeah, we've we've moved past. It. It's like how, um, like the word trauma is like the word trauma is the replacement for PTSD. Yeah, yeah, is the replacement for shell shock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but you know, white women keep coming up with new ways to appropriate what's happened to soldiers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and so we need to keep. We, like now, we need a new word for trauma. It, it's yeah. entrepreneur. We're in a similar sp- spot for that now, and I'm yeah. I'm excited to see. Where it goes next. Where it goes with next. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would call you more of like an investor than an entrepreneur because an entrepreneur, that's somebody with, you know, who's got a product. Um, Mm. I mean, in a way you do, you know, but I just know entrepreneurs or I know guys who are. The product's the town. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. I know some self identified entrepreneurs and. You do not remind me of them at all. <laughs> I will just tell you that much. That is a whole right brand, of, brand of dude it's right there. It's a brand of dude, yes. for sure. I like to think sure. of my product is, just, is love and dedication yes. to, the, yes. to the local. Yes. One of your other titles is Doctor of Law, right? I am, yeah. Technically, yeah. Sammy Roberts, one of your Patreon yes. uh, <laughs> subscribers, he gets very upset with me when I refer to myself as a doctor. <laughs> um, he's very salty about it. Yeah. And that's his fault for choosing the wrong degree. Yes, exactly. He's got a long time mm-hmm. left to go before he can so, get the yeah, so, how, so how long is it, does it take to get a doctorate in law? Three years. Three years. Yeah, I mean, the wow. standard law school course, you end up with a doctorate. I had no idea that that was the case. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. So y- y- you're not technically a lawyer because you've got to take the bar to yeah. do so, but you, you're <sighs> still a doctor? I think I might technically be a lawyer, but not an attorney. Mm, and there, it's, okay. it's nuanced, and it might be vice versa. Could you put yeah. Esquire on a nameplate? No. Okay. No, I, I mean, I could. It's well, true. I uh, could too. But but yeah. Fun fact, actually, about Esquire, which, you know, 
I think I may have mentioned this early on in the show, but one fun fact about Esquire is there's no board that oversees the use of it as a... The ABA is not on that? No, they're not. Technically, really? they have no ability to, say, prosecute somebody for impersonating Esquire. I, yeah. So, well, you so can what get, is the alternative career for Esquire? I don't think there is an alternative career. I just think that Esquire, even though it refers to somebody who is practicing law, it's not the same as impersonating a lawyer, if hmm. you were to say that you have Esquire at yeah. the end of your name. So technically, if you said in your business description that you were a lawyer, that could be prosecuted. Yes. If you did not pass the well, bar, even if you say you are Esquire, if you say yeah. in your business, I am Esquire, You're but good. if you were to say, identify yourself as Shadrach Straley Esquire, uh, then there's nothing that somebody could do about it. Even if you did that to insinuate you knew about the law and then do something with that insinuated knowledge, like yeah. nobody can nobody can go against no, you. No, but they would be able to prosecute you for giving legal advice. That's true. true. Yeah. yeah, this is something that they were very insistent on, that if you don't pass the bar... Don't give legal advice. Yeah, and if you do... That's, even that's if a, you know what? Honestly, you telling me that, that, that kind of sounds like legal it's advice. A real, it's a catch-22. <laughs> it's yeah. a real catch-22. Yeah. And... I don't know what to do about it. So you're telling me not to give legal advice because that would get me in legal jeopardy? That sounds, I don't know. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Yeah, this is recorded, me. by the way. Yeah, I'm curious Statue about that. of Liberty Haitians, by the way. How do you do best. that? How do you not give, I don't know, it just seems like a weirdly specific thing. Is it illegal for anybody who's not a lawyer to give legal advice or just? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, wow. a, it's wow. a, for some reason, the First Amendment just goes out the window Yeah. with this stuff. So like, if you, if you have a legal opinion as a non-attorney or non-lawyer, whatever it is, um, you're technically supposed to say something to the extent of, "But I'm not an attorney. We shouldn't rely. On, we need to go get an opinion." Yeah, mm -hmm. from somebody. Um, it just sounds like the big law trying to get more lawyers. No, that's exactly yeah. that's exactly <laughs> what it is. I mean, all all the law school and the legal community is one big hazing regime that's very protective of its own boundaries. Like any yeah. any you know small group of people. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I've heard this is actually yeah. sort of what dentists are like too. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How are they hazing each other and like taking the drill to the? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not. Yeah, yeah a lot of that... rubber gloves oh, coming out. Oh, That's oh, all oh, I'm gonna oh, say. Oh, uh, okay. A lot of Novocaine. A lot Playing of rubber gloves. Chubby bunny with metal utensils. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's actually sort of what it's like to get medically or dentally examined. Is it's like playing chubby bunny, especially yeah. when they're talking to you and they're taking photos of your. Oh my gosh. You're like, yeah. oh, tell me about your job. You're like, oh, <laughs> just 95% drool. And then you accidentally gleek on them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're upset about That's it. That's why they wear the glasses. <laughs> splash the splash protector. zone. Yeah. yeah exactly. the, it's, it's like going to see Shamu every yeah. time you go to work. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a, that's a, that must be an interesting community. I'm sure you've met the, some of the biggest sociopaths in the entire world. I'm sure I have. There, yeah. I mean, there would be guys that in class would seem intelligent and, and they were intelligent. But on the weekend, they go get plastered, and like, there's one guy that beat up like three people at a bar. No, I heard about this. Oh, yeah, really? I'm friends with, uh, really good friends with Dan Ziegler. Oh, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, you're, yeah. You're, 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 you guys didn't graduate the same year, we did. but oh, you did. We you did. graduated the same year. So yeah, well, not not from Hillsdale, but we did from yeah, Notre yeah, Dame. from Notre Dame. I took two years off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fellow classman. Yeah, Dan Ziegler's a friend of mine. So okay. Yeah, I heard about the guy who beat up some dudes. Or yeah, whatever. it was like <laughs> it was like the last month of school too. Whoa. Yeah. Um, couldn't handle it. But yeah, it, it's it's a weird. Yeah, you find a bunch of people who you know are lying to you in some way. You're just not mm -hmm. quite sure. Yeah, how it is, and so you just get this vague sense of um, uncomfort, uncomfort and disease. Do you think part of that is perpetuated by the fact that they rank every class? Is that you? Would you say it's a healthy or an unhealthy competition that it breeds? The I don't know what the ranking would do though to promote. Are you talking about sociopathy in general or the attitudes of the... Because the, generally, the, the best lawyers, the best law students are very good, kind people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, like, I, I roomed with the top two in our our grade and both both very good, upstanding guys. Mm -hmm. It was always the middling to, you know, bottom tier. And maybe that's what it is, is they don't yeah. want to come off as if they are the bottom rung. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, because at be that point you've it. got something to prove, right? It's like being yeah. the shortest player on a basketball team, right? Like you got to have attitude, because if you don't have attitude, <laughs> then you know you you can't really you know you're like you're, not only am I wrong, I'm wrong, and I'm very cocky. About yeah, it. Yes. <laughs> this applies, so, I think, to most professions, though. If yeah, you're true. If, if yeah. the only most of the people who bring other people down or go after the greats are usually yeah. people who haven't been successful. Yeah, they perceive it as a it's it's crabs in a bucket, <laughs> as they say. So <laughs> Is that the, a thing? Yeah, crabs, crabs in a bucket. In a bucket. It's a because. 
when crabs try to crawl out of a bucket, all the other crabs grab the crab and they pull it back <laughs> down because they're trying to get out of the bucket. I know so, what I'm betting on this weekend. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. The crab bucket. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. When you when you see that happening, say it's crabs in a bucket. Mm. So all right. That's the equivalent. There a lot go. of crabs in a you know, a lot of buckets. Size bucket. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, in in the, the not to sound like this guy, but in Japan, they Dylan has coworkers in Japan. It's true. So yeah. Has a lot of Japanese. I have, right? I have, I have Japanese knowledge. Uh, they rank every class uh, in in elementary, primary, you know, high school, the whole thing. Yeah, they they rank people. Um, and so, I mean, it's I don't not know. publicly known. It is. is. Really? Yeah, they literally put up. Uh, in the like entryway of the school, they post because <laughs> you've got your. I think is it's it's either semesters or quarterly. You've got these big exams that you take, and they literally put up everybody's scores, uh, and rank them from top oh, to wow. bottom, um, so that you know where you sit amongst everybody else. Uh, so it is entirely common knowledge that is open to the public. I yeah. wonder if that's better. So at law school, they it's not really common. Like you sort of get a vague idea of who's yeah. where, but yeah. That so the are secrecy you, you, might promote to. Do you only just get on your like a piece of paper? Like you take a test and they're like you're at this rank and then you move on. Well, or? you get so all the all the tests are on a bell curve. Mm -hmm. So um, if you get a B plus, you know you're like, oh okay, mm -hmm. I'm in here with everybody else. If you get a B, like a B is awful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then anything and that, is that just grade inflation? Or? Uh, no, that's just sort of how they they they. They just need to get the standard deviations out in such a way. And so if you get an yeah. A, you know you're doing really well. Because, mm -hmm. you know, if you have a class of 60 kids, like, what, three people will get an A, something like that. Wow. Um, so, no, because it's on a curve and it's pegged to that curve, there's no possibility of grade inflation, really. Yeah. I, uh, I've, I've never once um, had the temptation to take the LSAT, but I have had temptation to take... Uh, exams to become a canon lawyer are you familiar with this discipline? i took a canon law class oh really yeah, notre dame offers these oh yes. how was that it was great it was a yeah. uh, father john kimes he's a eastern catholic and he like the which is interesting because the, because eastern catholics have a really interesting canonical relationship with yeah i wonder if this Roman Church. Like, makes him better because he yeah. actually because i know like so as a as an Orthodox Christian myself, yeah, our relationship with the Catholic Church is kind of we It's it's sort of like the the great like Cornell Harvard rivalry that all the Cornell people know about. Yeah, but yeah. None, <laughs> of the, none of the Harvard people know about. Um, it's it's a little bit like that. It's a little, uh, you know, it, it's similar yeah. where it's like for an Orthodox, like we understand most of the distinctions between us and the Catholic Church because we're yeah. always being compared to the Catholic Church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then if you talk to, like if you're in a group and you say, oh, I'm Orthodox, and this other person says, oh, what's that? And then the Catholic in the group will say, oh, they're like Catholics. They just don't like the Pope. Yeah. And it's like, no, 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 no. no we, do, we, do like, is... we do like the Pope. <laughs> <laughs> nice guy. But there is yeah. massive theological... Hu well, it's, it's not It's even... not massive necessarily, depending on who you ask. I wouldn't are... even say that it's theological as much yeah. as it's uh, like a hermeneutic. Or yes. Like, like the Orthodox Church is... I mean, it's it's has good theology and it's well thought out but it's more about how you're living rather than what you're thinking about yeah it's it's uh the the, the classic lynch pin you know the dividing thing is the systematic theology of thomas aquinas yes. versus the less systematic yeah tradition yeah so the rest writ large the west writ large you know catholicism through Protestantism. yes yeah. Until you get to the charismatics, and they're all about systematic theology, and the yeah. Orthodox look at that and like, "You guys, <laughs> you guys need you to guys, pay like, more attention to Aquinas at the end of his writing career." Yeah, you're like, "You, you guys, you gotta, you gotta discern more from your dreams." <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, this is the thing. Like, Aquinas yeah. writes the Summa, and the Catholics are very proud of it. And it's yeah. a very impressive work. But it's all straw. It, it's all straw. Oh yeah, he has yeah. the vision and falls flat on his butt and stops writing that day. Yeah. Have you uh, <laughs> have you seen like the weird minority of Orthodox Christians who <laughs> like? I was online the other day and I found a Aquinas icon. <laughs> I have seen these. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, which is very funny. And it, maybe it's based off the end of his life, as you know, and they, they still kind of ref, like consider him a saint. But it's it's always been funny to me as the great boogeyman of <laughs> of the East, <laughs> immortalized in an icon. I'm not know? sure that Aquinas is the great boogeyman. I, yeah. he's just sort of like a because he's you know post schism and so yeah, yeah, we, yeah. Really, I'd say Augustine's probably close. We, yeah. He's a saint. He's not a boogeyman. He's a saint. He's a great guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, but. There's a good guy, love him, <laughs> don't agree with him. Yeah, <laughs> a, yeah. There's this in in the West. There's this Augustinian tradition that yeah. the East kind of is like, okay, slow, slow your roll here. Yeah, slow down a little bit. Yeah, with the Augustinianism. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a it's that's a universal Western trait. You know, from the Catholics to the 
to the Calvinists, mm-hmm. you know, this uh, Dylan could tell you. What? They love Augustine. They won't call him St. Augustine, but they love... No, of course they, not. They love <laughs> St. Augustine. <laughs> Why? We're, well, actually, we would because, you know... Anyone, well, anyways, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, who yeah. are we to say, but, you know, uh, that he is a saint or not, uh, that is yeah. up to the divine, of course. Uh, <laughs> we would never assign such labels to an individual. Yeah. Uh, though, you know, as we are the saints, in a way. Uh, yeah. We Actu- talked to... A good, yeah. a good sort of uh, understanding of what the difference between East and West is with Augustine being understood as an Orthodox saint is... a. Uh, so I was actually my, my father in law, my, my wife's family's all Orthodox and my father in law teaches at the college, teaches English. Mm-hmm. And he's uh teaching right now a bit on the confessions. And he was just telling me today actually the story or, uh, so they're in class and it's the second or third chapter of the confessions and Augustine, Augustine, he uh is you know, he's a rascal. Yeah, he's, of course. He's yes. getting a little frisky. <laughs> with, uh, Some a pairs are involved. Who <laughs> knows? Yeah. yeah, well, this is... This is, <laughs> this a, is more a, his... A lady. The living girl. Ah, uh, the legendary living girlfriend. Yes. Yeah, his, his name yeah. has not survived the tradition. And I was, he, I, I, the only sin I recognize uh, is the pair stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I ever recognize. Well, there's this, there's this scene where he's, you know, fooling around with this girl, and he, he feels a little guilty about it and whatnot, but he talks about how he believes in God, but he's not a Christian. Mm-hmm. And he doesn't consider himself to be a Christian, even though he believes in God. Yeah. And so my father-in-law in class, he says, okay, why, why does Augustine say that he's not a Christian at this point? And the, the class is kind of befuddled by this. And like, well, we don't know. That he, like, he doesn't understand what a Christian is. He doesn't understand what it means to abide by. Yeah, yeah. Like his, his mind is not right. And my father-in-law says, no, no, you don't. He tells you in the book. He tells you. And they're like, what? He's, he's, he's not baptized. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, that's, this is a very important point. Yes. And, you know, all the... Well, but that's like a having a sacramental view. Yeah. Right? Which, yeah. you know, that is a... We, we, like a lot of non denominationals would not have a sacramental yeah, view. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So why do you think that it's a dividing point from the East and West? Because in my mind, that my mind instantly goes to, oh, that's just non-sacramental. That's more like low church West. Right? Well, for one thing, the, the Catholics have thought it through and they've decided that there's only seven sacraments. Yeah. And it's like, well, the Orthodox would take issue with that. It's like there's there's at least many more. Yeah, um, and at the end, of the I won't day, give a number. Yeah. Well, yeah, you won't get it because at yeah. the end of the day, everything, yeah. everything is sacrament. Yeah, um, at least properly understood and properly participated in, um, everything is sacramental. Because if 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 God's in me and God's in you, God's in you, and we are actually participating with one another. Even if we're not going to receive the Eucharist together, we are participating in a little mini communion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By, by two, the two, engagement, two gathered in His name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your 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 encounter, your true encounter with the other, where you yeah. meet them in mutual sort of embrace. Yeah, that is a communion, um, and and therefore sacramental. Yeah. Uh, we we talked a little bit about this actually with uh, Evan Gage, other Orthodox Christian, uh, who was on the show last week, but. What is your opinion of sort of the more, because the, the the Catholic Church has kind of gone out of its way to demystify certain parts of like the historical church, or gone out of its way to reduce the more mystic mystic natures of the hagiographies mm-hmm. of various saints and whatnot. I mean, what, what what's your opinion on something like you know Christopher the the dog headed and you know. Uh, similar it's a it's a tricky thing because obviously pieties. you know most orthodox and you'd, you'd get it plenty that would say oh yeah christopher did have a dog head. um but that like th- we understand like no, no no these things didn't necessarily happen in a historical sense but yeah like that idea that history needs to have this sort of very scientific you know yeah factual sterile approach um that only developed in like the 18th century you yeah know? and so that, that's a relatively recent thing and and so it's okay so what's going on in these things these historical documents and these stories it's it's um it's it's a meant to bring you into the truth because at the end of the day like okay you only know how to tie a knot because you 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 struggle with it and you wrestle with it and then finally you know how to tie a knot it took me Way too long to learn how to tie my shoes. Yeah, yeah. I was strapping on the Velcro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then finally... (laughs) Well into my teens. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Um, But so we we understand this with physical things. Like to know how to build a house, you need to build a house and be taught. Um, it's It's a similar thing with intellectual truths and historical truths where... 
like you can tell me something like I mean this is this is sort of the, the Socratic method is like you, you posit an idea and then somebody pokes a hole in it and you come to this realization of oh wait I'm wrong somehow I don't necessarily know how and so then you have to engage with other ideas and then participate in metaphor and story until yeah you're able to you know actually encounter truth and beauty in a in a me- metaphorical way but then also in a, in a more real and personal way through that and so yeah I, like one of the one of my least favorite thing not to not to offend the, the catholics that are you know good and <laughs> Wonderful and you know, <laughs> faithful people. That it, I have a lot of friends who are Catholic. Yeah. I, got, I got a lot of friends. I got a lot of, they're great people. Yeah. They're fine people. Um, um, but I think one of the worst things that happened was taking away the iconostasis and yeah, showing yeah. Um, the, the, the consecration of the Eucharist publicly. Yeah. Because when, uh, so at Notre Dame, I was an assistant rector. And as part of, so I'm living in a dorm with all these undergrads. Yeah. And every dorm at Notre Dame has a chapel. And so part of my duties was every Sunday evening, every Sunday night, I would go to mass with, you know, hundred some guys at the dorm. And, yeah. And there is a little bit of it that, okay, now that you've taken away the iconostasis and you're showing this Eucharist being yeah. consecrated publicly, like I'm looking at it, it's a wafer. You yeah. know, like I, I, I so I, 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 I kind of agree with you in a certain capacity mm-hmm. because this isn't, you know, this is more of a question of tradition and less of a question of doctrine. Right. Yeah. And I think that I would agree that it's yeah. like validly celebrated. And all yeah. Yeah. That. Yeah. So, yeah. but what I'm saying is that you know, in the Catholic Church specifically, you know, it's not, a, it's not church doctrine mm-hmm. that it has to be publicly displayed. Um, and I I do sort of agree. A good example of this would be, have you have you listened to um the, the smashing of the altars? No. It, it's a I forget the author off the top of my or read the smashing of the altars. Um, also I forget, no. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I've uh I've 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 read about two thirds of it. I forgot the author's name off the top of my head, but it's a book about the Reformation in England and what pre-Reformation England looked like and how the world is very alien to us. Like when we look back at pre-Reformation Europe, it's very easy for us to impart our own version of events. It's for us to impart our own ideas of what life was like based primarily off of just enlightenment Thought processes. No, we, do, we don't even need to go back to pre-Reformation. We yeah, do this, yeah. you know, yeah. twenty years. Yeah, ago. exactly. Yeah. You know, it's it's, it's <laughs> yeah. but but you know, it's extreme. The further you get back, and basically, yeah. the whole point of this is for him to sort of say, look, you know, this actually was a undermining of an entire way of life. Like it, yeah. it fundamentally, and you know, some in this room might say for for good, but it fundamentally shifted what it was like to be a human being yeah. at the time. You know, is it weirdly convenient like that one of the first things they did was get rid of all the summer festivals so peasants had to work all year? That's it might, maybe. <laughs> maybe it's weirdly convenient. Uh, but, uh, one of the things that he talks about, and if you go to an iconostasis, or it wouldn't necessarily be called an iconostasis in the West at that time, but if you go to an a old church, screen. yeah, if you go to a, an old church and they sell a root screen, especially in you know old Europe, and you walk up to one, you can see holes Mm-hmm. bored in to the uh into this into the root screen because traditionally and this is you know a policy still in some churches you wouldn't receive the eucharist unless it was easter mm. or you were getting married right it was for just for real special occasions it was yeah. something that you know required all of lent and multiple confessions and yeah. you were actively preparing for this thing it was this culmination right and then now, you know, you can receive the Eucharist every day, and that's a a, a wonderful thing. And I, you know, firmly believe I would push that. Back that's on that a little. Yeah, no, I, I'm sure you would. <laughs> I'm sure yeah. you would. And uh, I, you know, and I think I would personally think I might fall into your camp in some capacities with this because you know it's important to keep things rare and beautiful, right, mm-hmm. and mystified, right. Yeah. But for a long time, I didn't. I would receive less than I. I would, I would not receive more than I received. Um, because I thought, you know, if I wasn't feeling mass or I wasn't there, mm-hmm. if I wasn't really a part of it, I wouldn't wouldn't go through with it. But um, there were these holes there because since it was something that they weren't receiving every single Sunday, um, it was more about the, the consecration itself mm. was the culmination of the yeah, service. Because to them, it was that was where you know Christ touched Earth, yeah. right? In the, in a, in like the classic, you know. In Bible school definition of a sacrament, you know, where yeah. God touches earth, right? Where the, that interaction occurs. Uh, 
And so, you know, people would bore holes in the walls. They would all rush up. They'd try to get as close to it as possible. But then, of course, they they wouldn't see anything. The priest have a bouncer. Just, just yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's funny, too. One thing that Deacons they... Deacons all wielding clubs yeah. just out there. Well, <laughs> well, that's not too far off. One thing that they mentioned in the books is, is that part of the reason why communion rails were first invented, and a lot of, like, libs will bring this up to try and say we shouldn't have them, and that's very dumb, but... Part of the reason communion rails were invented was for that reason, was to prevent people from rushing. And also because, you know, back before pews became the, the, the Protestant invention, the pew. <laughs> but back before pews became... The Greeks, the Greeks have these. Yes. Yeah. Um, back before the, the pews became standard, you know, you could, didn't have as much control over children or just people. God bless. You know, and also dogs and livestock. Oh. Because people would bring their livestock to mass for the sake of getting some sort of spiritual blessing over their animals. And so to like to prevent dogs from nipping at the priests, they're like, all right, <laughs> this separation needs to occur. Right. Um, so the dogs fun. respect the railing. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. They can't go under or over. It. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, it's an uh, impenetrable wall to them. It is funny when you kind of clock into stuff historically, even in, you know, I mean, the reformation is kind of, recent (laughs) all things considered i mean the fact that we just celebrated or you know remembered 500 years uh recently is a good indication that do you guys think that you know we're 500 years post reformation like is something bad going to happen to the church again more because okay so 500 years AD. yeah that's sort of where you know the catholics and orthodox start splitting yeah i can't remember exactly what the, the cause of it was but then Thousand eighty, you get the schism. The, formal, the actual schism, yeah. And then fifteen hundred, you get the Reformation. <laughs> and now, I mean, I think uh, we're just gonna get, uh, you know, abject atheism and a uh, slow decline into right. <laughs> solipsism. Yeah, I mean, the, the <laughs> things that we've already <laughs> yeah. been getting. I, I think that just you know, we're yeah. well on our way then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I would. I have a hard time seeing a major like move happening i anymore. suppose there's not really the leadership yeah i mean yeah. I, it's things are so fragmented at this point that like you know stuff like that's happening all the time within denominations but because christendom has been broken down into so many small entities that like you know esteem is being exhausted all the time but yeah. in small little pockets yeah. right well, the no nice thing the nice thing about the steam thing up. is that you guys you guys can as the orthodox you have the power just to let that steam blow off where you're like ah they're just not in communion with us, you know, yeah, and then yeah. they blow, you know, they go like, okay, well, I guess we're joining the Russians or I guess we're going to, you know, the Africans, I suppose, you know, we're Ethiopian now, you know, it's like they'll just kind of, you know, we might get, we might be getting the Ethiopians back. They've been oh, really? Be, yeah. There's a, there have been murmurs for decades now, <laughs> but that's a relatively short time. Yeah, America. exactly. <laughs> but apparently, so the Ethiopian church, they are out of communion with the Orthodox because yeah. they're supposedly monophysites. Yes. And, Famously uh, so. And, Apparently, at the same time that in the sort of Catholic Orthodox, well, we'll just call it the West, yeah, and you know, priestism, um, they although I suppose, it, yeah, you call it the West, um, or I suppose it would be the North, maybe if you're comparing it to Ethiopia, um, at the same time that they're dealing with trying to really define the the two natures of Christ and all that, um, the the Ethiopians are dealing with the opposite of problem where they get, they've got heretics going around saying no, it's, it's completely different things like yeah. different guys even and so they're the ethiopians are fighting to unify christ in yeah his oneness and uh because you know ethiopians don't speak greek all that well or something i don't know yeah they they they're having these internal conversations and then these get relayed to the orthodox and catholics and then we're saying oh, oh that's bad <laughs> and uh but now you know 1500 years later or whatever it is uh, well, maybe we Maybe we were a little bit rough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so now there's, like, at my church in Fargo, we have yeah. maybe a, a quarter of it is Ethiopians, Eritreans, who are, um, they're, they take communion with us. They're, they're, yeah. um, they've been given a dispensation to do that. Yeah. Well, I mean, they have the, they have the Ark of the Covenant. So that's right. You Damn know. it. <laughs> you, not, we got to get it back. <laughs> you, you know, the Ark, I I, I'm a firm believer the Ark of the Covenant is in Ethiopia. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. If you watch videos about that monastery, like, miracles happen there. It's, it's, <laughs> they've you got know, it. YouTube knows. Yeah, YouTube, yeah, YouTube yeah, knows. Yeah. Yeah. They know a lot about the Denver airport. They know a lot <laughs> over on YouTube. All right, Dill, you're, uh, you're gonna, we're going to questions. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like, we're, we are, uh, the show's actually about something, I mean, ostensibly, yeah. but we didn't get to it today, which is chill. <laughs> um, 
but uh, in order for us to you know make it happen and have uh, a set like we do, I mean, I don't want to call this a set. That's very generous. But a studio space in which yes. to record the equipment that you're seeing in front of us. We've got new mic stands. We've got new headphones. Yep. You know, we're, new mic stands, new headphones, new cords. Yeah, we're making yeah. it a, a we're, we're building out the production. We can only do so because of folks like you out there and our <laughs> beautiful patrons uh, who support the show. Special shout out to our top patrons, Zach and Amber Straley. Sammy Roberts and Joe Papillard. Thank yes. you so much for your support, yes. especially. Um, you got all sorts of different benefits. I won't list them all out. You can go uh, just go on Patreon and search out Monomaniacs Podcast. Special shout out to a new patron, Rachel Salomito. Hey. Uh, thank cool. you so much for your support. Really appreciate that. Um, and yeah, go check out the benefits you guys can get uh, by going there. But at the $10 when did she Patreon? Tier, uh, what? When did she Patreon? Like last week. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's After the Gage now. episode. Yeah, okay. She's coming back to town for the summer. Yeah. I didn't know this. We should have yeah. her on. Yeah, I'd love yeah. to have you on. Um, the uh, $10 tier, you guys can ask questions that we answer on the show, okay? Uh, we got a question from Samuel Roberts. Oh, We've got two. Okay. Uh, <laughs> one is going to be a, a Patreon exclusive. Uh <laughs> I will read it aloud though, because uh, everybody in the taste. everybody yeah. in the Discord thought I would be a bitch if I didn't read it. <laughs> so I will read it. Uh, if if Luke feels comfortable, how, how do the it. Patreon, I, I don't feel like patrons, this could... how the, the patrons are they patrons? Patrons, patrons? Yeah. 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 Um, how do you deliver the? Okay, you got this person coming on. Yeah. yeah. Is it a Discord thing or is it a? They've email? got a, there's a message system on Patreon. You okay. can send out messages directly to. Okay. And then we also I've heard Sammy pop up a number. He's a, he's a very loyal. Yes. He's a loyal question asker. Most of the people in the Discord, they listen to every episode, but Sammy goes out of his way to make sure that he asks questions. I'm yes. very impressed. I don't know yes. how he has the time to do it. Uh, I mean, it's two two sentences a week. It's, uh, <laughs> it's not a lot of work. Not a lot of work. Uh, all right. Okay. So uh, first question for Luke. Uh, what is the best hot dog topping and or topping combination? Ooh. There is a place in Fargo called Taco Bros. And I don't know if they're you're still not operating. starting out strong. <laughs> yeah, but they have a, There's they have a, a Mexican place in Fargo. They have you a can Mexican, get hot dog. Mexican hot dog. And the guy, no, the guys, the guys are real. Like him and his brother. What are the names? It's like Octo and Juan or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Um, but they're from Mexico or from South they're, America. Yeah, from Central or South America. From the South somewhere. And yeah, yeah, south of the border. And uh, they they came up to Fargo and they've got a taco truck now. Saw the movie, and thought they, it was fun. Oh, they couldn't yeah. believe it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, this to come up to they reminded them of home. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> uh, and so they do a Mexican hot dog, which is uh, it's wrapped in bacon. So you got like a mm, bacon okay. spiral, and it's pretty crispy. <laughs> yeah. And then oh, what's on it? They've got um, pico, mm. and mm. Um, oh, there's some sort of special sauce, like a, maybe like a creamy sriracha or something. Yeah, like yeah. This, um, which I guess it would that wouldn't be. Hispanic, but whatever. Um, and I'm trying to, so it, yeah, it's pico bacon, this creamy sriracha, or like a spicy mayo, or something like this. And mm. oh, what else is on there? Oh, I want to say there's like a green drizzle as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Some and, sort of green, green uh, yeah, like substance, a, like, <laughs> like some sort of Hispanic pesto. Yeah, yes. yeah. Uh, and, uh, it, it does sound delicious, but it does not sound much like a hot dog. Well, you got the it's a hot dog. You yeah, know. I mean, it, there is a hot dog in it, but that's like <laughs> is saying a Chicago dog a hot that's dog? like saying a, a a hot a pizza that you put a hot dog on top of is a hot dog, <laughs> right? Is a Chicago dog count as a hot dog? Well, I mean, there's a lot of accoutrement on that. I will, yeah. say, I personally, and a lot of people would get mad at me. Not a, I do like a Chicago dog. I don't know how if I would qualify it as like a classic hot dog. Okay, so dog. what yeah. when we say. Is it just what's the well, best so it, classic is on hot a bun. dog topping? No, yeah, so, it's on a bun. Yeah, yeah. so Dylan, yeah. I think the difference is that this is on a bun. Okay, so I mean, I agree. If, okay, because if I, don't know, I just feel like if you wrap something in bacon, it is an irrevocably <laughs> transformed. <right? laughs> yeah. like, if you're eating turkey wrapped in bacon, you are not eating turkey anymore. You're yeah. eating turkey wrapped in bacon. It's all yeah. pork. That's true. Yeah, yeah, it's different true. parts of the pig. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got the hoof and the and the belly or whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh no, they're not putting the belly in that. That's yeah. too good. That's is there like good. a like a De Dakota's style? Is there like a Minneapolis dog or something? If there were, it'd be some sort of hot dish. Yeah, like, mm -hmm. you get like a nice tater tot. This could actually be, oh wow, this would actually be a great hot dog. I'm <laughs> thinking about it. You get like a tater tot hot dish Ooh. and double some ketchup on that <laughs> with on the dog. <laughs> <laughs> I'm opening up a stand. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah exactly. 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 That's actually what you bought all those <laughs> buildings for is yeah. for the production line of this you hot dog. You would not believe the amount of casserole we're pumping yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's funny because I feel like every place feels like they have to have a dog. 
Yeah. And you get to some stupid stuff. Like in Seattle, we have the Seattle dog, which is essentially a California yeah. roll. Octopus. No, it's 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 cream cheese and avocado. <laughs> What? And hot sauce. It's cream cheese, avocado, and hot sauce. For some reason, it's like a California roll. Is it good? Basically, um, I've actually never had one from a hot dog stand, so oh. I don't know if I could like because, you know, they call it the Seattle dog, but it's not something you can just go cream and buy from a hot dog stand. Yeah, there's no, no way. True. That's... Yeah, I don't know. I've eaten much more perishable food from New York food stands, <laughs> and I was fine. <laughs> You're a strapping young man. Yeah, yeah I know. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I could, now I, though, <laughs> nowadays halal food would be impossible for me to eat. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh goodness. Uh, so I will read the next question, but we will talk about it. Why? I don't know. I, I feel like this could be a problem. I well, uh, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, let me read it. Let me gauge. How about room. this? How about this? Make no claims about the things, but feel okay. Free to okay. Go through okay. with it. Let me before you start establishing terms. Let's, yeah. Let me read the question. <laughs> it's a question for everybody. Rank the world religions. <laughs> <laughs> Rank the world religions. Yeah. Um, I think you got to figure out what the bottom is before you... Obviously, we've got our top figured out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, it's going to yeah. be Christianity at the top for sure. Yeah, yeah. And I think we yeah. could all just say Christendom, Christianity, you know, as the top right there. Yeah. yeah. I, I feel like going into the new the schisms or et cetera, I think that's that's beyond the point. It yeah. should be just the ism. Yeah. And, and we can't even... Like to be to be real, like to be real with y'all, uh, we can't put anybody else at the top here. <laughs> I mean, we could. Yeah, yeah it's we true. Have free will. Yeah, yeah it's exactly. true. As, exactly. as baptized members of the Christian Church, <laughs> can't really. Can't I mean, really. I'm baptized, so I, I have to be a Christian. Yeah, yeah. boy, yeah. I would you know love to be a Sikh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Sikhism. Yeah, is Sikhism a world religion though? I don't know if I'd put it at world well, religion is it like, status. Is it like? Like Catholicism or Orthodoxy, just for Islam? No, no, yeah. no, no. It's it's so it's, it's to like, clarify. His question was religions. Yeah, does not say world religions. Oh. But I felt like we needed to distill it down just a little bit. Yeah, because Sikhism mm. is more like it's like it's basically a Hindu Islam Mormonism, where it was a guy who oh. came up with his own kind of worldview, and then uh-huh. they became very passionate. They got crushed by local government and then that resulted in okay. them kind of I'm thinking birthing. of Shia Shiites and Sunnis that's yeah well that, that's of. yeah that's the yeah. major schism yeah. in Islam yeah. Yeah. and yeah. then the there's the Sufis which basically are the oh. orthodox of Islam they're, oh, wow. they're the mystic voice they're doing their okay. own thing and mostly in Africa I would have but. had Buddhism my top five but they've obviously you know fallen Oof, grace yeah in yes. these last week current events <laughs> current events, current events really are bad for Buddhism. Uh, for Buddhism oh, I had trending down yeah who could have seen it coming from the Dalai Lama the stocks are just yeah, plummeting. Jim, Jim yeah. Kramer told me to invest a couple weeks ago, and boy. <laughs> yeah. That's Glad a classic Kramer did. take. He's yeah. like, God, this is a lock. <laughs> this is my lock of the week. <laughs> Buddhism. I, I took a taste. I got a little bit of enlightenment. I'm yeah. going back for more. <laughs> you got to buy Buddhism. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now's oh, the time man. to buy. It's low. Yeah. That's right. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. yeah. Uh, well, no, actually, they're not going to get a new yeah. Dalai Lama anytime soon, though. It's yeah, it's probably. Like, five, well, this guy, well, he has, this guy to, has, he has to, to die. die. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But he has a successor already. There's what? Like a, there's it's like a, a kid. It's already no, no. It's like yeah. I thought it was like a suite of children. Oh, really? I thought the way it was is he's interested in suites of children. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Boy, the Hillsdale Buddhist crowd's really gonna yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. upset. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I thought it was they get like a handful of kids in a room that they think might be the Dalai Lama at the yeah. age of five. Like uh, dies, see, I saw I saw an episode of King of the Hill about this, and oh. uh, it's what from what King of the Hill says <laughs> <laughs> is that it's when when the Dalai Lama dies, yeah. then the decision is made. It's not based before then because yeah, it's I about a reincarnation of the soul. Yeah, right? I heard they need to wait like at least five years after because that, they they yeah. take like a crop of kids that were born right after he dies, mm-hmm. raise them for five years, and then they get them in a room with. His belongings. Yeah, yeah. And the first one says, it's "Like, oh, I kind of remember this thing." Or the first one says, "Suck my tongue." Yeah, <laughs> you know, that's the Dalai Lama. That's the Dalai wow, Lama. Yeah. Oh, there he is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I feel like if you if you're the head of Buddhism, you know, and you're trying to get out of the real the wheel of samsara, like, wouldn't you be under the impression that the Dalai Lama would be somebody who would be outside of the reincarnation cycle? Do they reincarnate into anything or back into humans or No, I think they I think it's it's a, it's a universal. I think they can reincarnate into multiple things. Interesting. But I'm pretty sure that there is a 
you know, this is why there's we're qualified cl- to rank the world religions. Yeah, yeah. There's but, a clear hierarchy, and I think hu- being a human is pretty high up on that hierarchy. So I've got but, Greek paganism above Buddhism now that it, I know that. Okay. Because uh, <laughs> okay. at least the Greeks, you know, they thought like, oh, yeah, you reincarnate, but you're, you're still a dude. Yeah. Well, or so, gal. Yeah. It's just weird to me because in my mind, you know, the, 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 the goal of Buddhism is to reach nirvana, to exit the wheel of being and, you know, mm. et cetera. Like, who's more qualified than that than at that than the head of your religion or maybe it, it might be like the way that christians understand i'm still the know, chief of sinners yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the patriarchs or the pope or etc it's like oh this is just a guy who yeah. has an authority over this and is you know maybe perhaps is spiritually ordained in that way but yeah although tibet i don't know man I'm, I, I may not be pro i don't know i saw a lot of the second that happened, all of the pro China accounts got like real, like, oh, we told you. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, gotcha. You know, yeah. That's uh, what it happened. How many pro China accounts are you following? I'm not following them. <laughs> They're just in the algorithms. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, so, but like. Sorab Amari over there. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> Sorab, Sorab <laughs> didn't hit that, but there was a. Uh, it was like, you know, oh, you know, Tibet actually used to be a slave state. And it was like, there were ser- everybody else was serfs and the Who, priestly class. What was... state was not a slave state? Well, I'm saying like in the 20th century when they got conquered. That's apparently what, that's what the accounts say. That's what the pro-China accounts say. It was like, oh, you guys should have seen this coming. It's, a, it's, they're bad guys. The Dalai in Lama. In China, they aren't, they don't have, well, they do have slaves. But, yeah. and, but even among polite society in China, they still have a, like a very racialized caste system. Yes. Like, oh, the, the Han Chinese. Yeah, I don't yeah. understand. Like the West is so we we care so much about racism. Yeah. Why Why do we not actually? I feel like it's only. Well, I think neocons. it's honestly. Well, it's, it's uh, frankly, I think it's because we we don't actually recognize the differences between the different Han or the ch- different Chinese ethnic groups as racial. They're all just, they're all just squinting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like if, to the average American, we're like, oh, those are just Chinese people, and mm-hmm. it's much more difficult for us to be like, oh yeah, this is this is the Han. This is the Hans. You know, traditionally the head of of you know Beijing is actually the, only the capital for certain ethnic groups. That you know, blah, blah, blah. is like that. That requires too much homework. <laughs> the mm-hmm. process. Yeah, for the average Twitter <laughs> the average user. Twitter user. Yeah. Um, Guys, we we are actually running out of time on okay. the base episode, and well, we haven't ma- ranked a single religion outside of Christianity. So we're going to continue this conversation into the Patreon. Patreon. Yes, uh, and we will actually make some hardcore calls and yes. start we making a cuts. whiteboard. Yeah, because yeah, at this maybe. point we're, we're we we would have had to make a whole episode just about this if yeah. we were going to like have this long a discussion yeah, per this religion. Is its own yeah, yeah, discussion. yes, exactly. This I'm is just going to say podcast. before we go, the Druze higher than you think. <laughs> <laughs> Look out for that. Yeah, uh, thank you all. Zoroastrians for lower than you think. <laughs> uh, thank uh, you all for listening. Uh, thank you, Luke, for coming on to the yeah, show. Pleasure, a real yeah. pleasure. It's been nice. Yeah. nice. and uh, yeah, we'll see you all on the Patreon if you're interested. Uh, and if you're if you want to listen to that. You're gonna have if to you come, if you're you know some sort of Facebook account uh, troller of certain stripe who's trying to get you know some sort of ammunition that you could use against Luke one day you know <laughs> yeah, yeah. then this is the great thing about owning yourself is like yeah. oh, what are they gonna do to come for me it's like yeah, yeah whatever I'll kick you out don't yeah. say that don't <laughs> say that don't say that no, no, yeah no no no, no. Um, we're, we're, I'm just saying you know you just pay, yeah, yeah, pay ten dollars and you get to hear what, whatever it is you want to hear that's what all. race okay <laughs> <laughs> next. Yeah. find out wait, he's wait, come wait. for the white women yeah <laughs> <laughs> and I said nothing <laughs> for I was not a white woman thank god alright see you guys in the next bye bye